Well, hello. <laughs> Welcome to my kitchen. Easter is right around the corner, and I thought this would be a perfect time of the year to share a deviled egg recipe. We're all going to have extra boiled eggs on our hands. At least I know we will. And there's nothing better, in my opinion, than a delicious deviled egg. Deviled eggs are not complicated, but they can be frustrating. And for me, what makes them more frustrating than anything is when the shell sticks to the egg. Now, I know that probably has never happened to you, but I can't tell you how many times it has happened to me. And I have tried to peel the eggshell and chunks of the egg come off with it. Oh, there's nothing worse. <laughs> well, the trick that I have learned about that and one that my mom shared with me years ago, and now I know the reason why, is not to use eggs that you've just purchased from the store. If you know ahead of time that you're gonna make a batch of deviled eggs, it is a good idea to go ahead and purchase your eggs and let them sit in the refrigerator for about a week before you boil them. The reason why is because there's an air pocket that begins to form the older that the egg is, and that air gets in between the shell and the egg white and separates it just a tiny bit. That's why a lot of times when you add your eggs to the water, they might float a little bit, and that is a very good sign. Now, I'm not telling you to use really old eggs. Do not go past the expiration date, but what I am telling you is don't run to the store right now and come home and boil eggs and expect for them to come off perfectly. Okay, that's my tip. Shazam! <laughs> and who knows, there is an occasion where they're still a little hard to peel, and that's why I'll put in a couple of extra eggs, more than what I really want to make, because if one of them is not a pretty egg, then I'll use it for something else, and I want to make sure that I have enough for my recipe. Now, I am just going to add these to my pot. I'm making a few because we're going to visit family this weekend. We're going to my mom's. I'm really excited about that. And um, I told her, I said, Mom, why don't you let me make the deviled eggs this time? And she was glad to pass that job on to me. So <laughs> my mother is a fabulous cook, but she is smart enough not to turn down a little help. Now, the cooking is going to be the easiest part. I just cover these eggs with water and I bring them to a boil. I put the lid on, I turn that temperature off, I turn the heat off completely, and then I just let my eggs sit for about 20 minutes in that hot water and it cooks them perfectly. So, I'm going to go fill this up and I'll see you back here in a minute. All right, my eggs are done. I did just what I said I was gonna do. I let the water come to a boil. I immediately turned my heat off and I set my timer for 20 minutes. Then I drained my water and I filled my pot back up with some cool water. And now I'm going to start peeling one of these eggs and see how it goes. <laughs> Yay! That is exactly what I wanted. Now, I'll just put my, my clean egg back in the water and that way it gets off any eggshell. But see how easy these are coming off. If you will use eggs that are about a week old, I'm telling you, it makes all the difference in the world. If you go to the grocery store and buy eggs and come right home and boil them, you're gonna have a mess just like I did. These are all doing beautifully. I'm gonna get these peeled and then we're gonna start Mixing up those deviled eggs. 
Well, I have my eggs all peeled and they came out perfect. Now, I'm gonna start the next step and that is getting the yolk out. Look how perfect the yolk is. Come on in, baby. Peewee. Nothing like the smell of boiled eggs when you first walk in the house, huh? <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right, let's see. It is ooh, almost five o'clock. We'll eat at six, baby. Last one. These look great. Now, at the end of my video, I will have an exact recipe for you that you can go buy. But deviled eggs is all about your own preference and what you like. I like mayonnaise. My whole entire family likes mayonnaise. As a matter of fact, let me rephrase that. I love mayonnaise. <laughs> uh, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and... I need a smaller spoon. Oh, that's good. That's about a half of a cup of mayonnaise. And I am going to go ahead and start mixing these eggs. Now, I have my hand mixer here because I love the texture that the mixer gives the eggs. They're light and they're fluffy. And I'll show you how pretty these are gonna be once we start filling the eggs. So here we go with this. These look perfect. Look at that smooth, creamy texture with no lumps. That's what we're looking for. Now I'm making a couple of different varieties. I'm going to do the traditional eggs, but I'm also going to make what I'm going to call Chick-fil-A eggs and they are so, so good. Okay. What I'm going to do is divide this. It all starts with the egg yolks and the mayonnaise. If I didn't make just regular traditional deviled eggs, my family would be very disappointed. There are some of us that like to venture out a little bit and try something different, but then there are those in my family that say they just want pickle relish and mayonnaise, and that is it. So that's the first thing that I'm going to make. And I've got sweet pickle relish here. And I am going to add about a half of a tablespoon. And that is pretty much it. We're going to my mother's and my brother and his family will be there and he and his wife have a little boy, Christian, my nephew, and he is absolutely adorable. And he loves deviled eggs. And every time we go and he comes and my mother makes deviled eggs, she always takes pieces of pimento and then she makes an X on the top of the eggs. Well, he was about, I don't know, he might have been close to four. And he sat down to the dinner table and he saw the deviled eggs and they did not have an X on them. I'm going to add just a little bit more pickle relish here. And he looked up and he said, Grandma, why are there no X's on these eggs? And Mom had forgotten to buy the pimentos. And so she didn't think much about it, but little Christian, he wouldn't hardly eat those eggs so, it's all in what you're used to and what you like. Now, I'm going to take just a 
tiny bit of sugar. And this is really a pinch. That's all it is. And that's good. I'll just taste this. Mm. Perfect. Now, I'm gonna set that aside. I am going to make my favorite devil eggs. We went to a wedding last year and they had the reception cater and the reception was fabulous. They had country food, upscale country food, and they served chicken and biscuits and little barbecue sliders, and it was so elegant and well done. And then they served deviled eggs. Well, I tell you what, I camped out at those deviled eggs. They were the best things I had ever had. And basically, they used a honey mustard or Chick-fil-A sauce. And this gives these eggs a smoky, sweet flavor that is out of this world. Oh, aren't you so glad that they finally started putting this in a bottle? and selling it at the grocery store. This stuff is awesome. Now, that's not all we're doing here. I've also got some bacon. Now, this is the pre-cooked bacon. It comes like this. Now, I'm not gonna go to the trouble, crisp it up, because it's gonna sit in these egg yolks, and it's gonna get, you know, just kind of that cooked bacon feel to it. And I've got about three pieces here. I love this pre-cooked bacon. It has made my life so much easier. I love that I don't have to fry it and dirty up and wash the frying pan. I just pull this out of the package and it's ready to go. Now I still cook bacon the old fashioned way most of the time when we're having breakfast. Sometime on the weekdays, I'll, I'll cheat a little bit when I make my husband's breakfast and I'll have a lot of time and I'll, I'll heat this up in the skillet and it's perfect. Now, take this and put it right in here. Now that's gonna give it even more of a smoky flavor. Now, let's see, let me get a little bowl to put this in. Now, the thing that finishes this egg off, I don't know if you saw this sitting on my counter or not, but this is cool cocoa. And I'm going to take a tiny bit of the juice and pour it right in. Not much, but I want a little bit of that pickled okra flavor inside the egg. And my fork here. I'm going to cut a few pieces come on over here, of this okra and we're going to garnish the egg with this pickled okra. When you take a bite of that creamy, delicious, smoky egg and then hit the crunchiness of this pickled okra, it is the perfect combination. Just going to make nice little pieces here. 
not quite sure how many eggs that's going to make. So if I need more, I'll do more. And a nice little piece on there so we get a good bite in that. That's good and a little sour. I love okra. I love okra boil. I love okra fried. You can't give me an okra that I don't like. Now, here's the fun part. I have some pastry bags here. I buy them by the hundreds and they're so, so cheap. And I love using a pastry bag to fill the eggs. But if you don't have a pastry bag, you can definitely use a Ziploc baggie and just cut off the corner. I've done that hundreds of times and it works out perfect. Now, the thing that I found that works really good in helping to fill this pastry bag is I use a cup and I just pull the bag over the cup and then I start filling. Take this and put it right inside. And this one is done. And there we go. Just gonna twist that off. And now I'm gonna do the next one. And here we go. Voila. Number two. I'm gonna get a little bit of this cleaned up and I'll fill these for you and show you how simple it is to make a really great presentation. Now I am packing these up and taking them to my mother's house. Like I said, but I still want to show you how easy it is to make a really good presentation. I am going to lay a few of these eggs down. And I'm going to start with my honey mustard and I'm going to clip off just a, a little piece here that is big enough. I want to make sure that the hole is big enough for the bacon to come out of. If you make a really small hole, then it's going to be, you're going to constantly clean it out because your bacon is going to get stuck. Now, Take your hand and put it at the top. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that out. And then you're gently going to squeeze. And look at there. Look how easy that is and how pretty they're gonna be. Now, before I go ahead and finish the rest of them, I'm going to show you how to garnish these Chick-fil-A eggs. Just going to put a couple of pieces of bacon there just so everybody knows that there's bacon inside. And then I'm going to take this piece of pickled okra and put it right on top. My mouth is watering. <laughs> oh, this looks so, so, so good. I'm gonna wait until I finish before I eat one. Okay. Let me keep going. Push down. See? 
Get all of that from the top and just begin to push down. Put your hand right here and gently squeeze. And I think this is going to be my last one. Yep. Just try it. That is so good. What is it about that Chick-fil-A sauce that's so delicious? pretty presentation I'm just going to show you you can take the lettuce and put it all around and underneath it's beautiful I didn't have enough lettuce so I'm just giving you the concept of that I should have been a little bit more prepared but you know what let's go in for the most important part how it tastes It's amazing how something so simple can be so, so good. This is delicious. I hope that you'll try this recipe. I know it'll be a winner with your family, just like it's going to be with mine. And I hope you have a beautiful Easter. You are a blessing to me. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Remember, Jesus has risen. He is risen indeed. Blessings, everyone.